जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे थैंक यू Kopi janna vala ba girivara da de Kopi janna vala ba girivara da de यशोरनंदन प्रजजनरंजन यशोरनंदन प्रजजनरंजन यामुना थेरावन Chari Yamuna Thira Vana Chari Chaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya 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 Vishnupad, Brahmahamsa, Parivadya Kachaya Ashtotra Shatashi Shimad is divine grace. Sesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Anant Kati Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai. Gantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Guranga. Somebody has an adapter here. Doesn't doesn't Govardhan have an iPad? Yeah, I need some charge or something. Oh, you don't have an iPad? Oh. Nope. Okay, thanks. No problem. Om Namah Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6 Prescribed Duties for Mankind, Chapter 11 The Transcendental Qualities of Vitrasura, Text 25 Na Naka Prishtam na cha parameshtyam na sarva 
Baumam na Sadi Patyam na Yoga Sidhir Apurna Bavam Va Samanjasa Twa Virahaya Kankshe Nanaka Pishtam Nacha Paramishtam Nasarva Baumam Narasadi Patyam Na Yoga Siddhir Apunar Bavam Va Samanjasa Twa Virahaya Kangshe Na Naka Pishtam Na Chaparamishtam Na Sarva Baumam Na Rasadi Patyam Na Yoga Siddhir Apunar Bavam Va Samanjasa Twa Virahaya Kangshe Nanaka Prishtam na Chaparameshtam Nasarva Baumam na Rasadi Patyam Na Yoga Siddhir Abunar Bhavamba Samanjasa, excuse me, Samanjasa Twa Virahaya Kangshe Okay, we're booed. <coughs> Translation. Na, not. Na kapristam. The heavenly planets are Driva Loka. Na, nor. Cha, also. Parameshtyam. The planet on which Lord Rama resides. Na, nor. Sarva Baumam. Sovereignty of the whole earthly planetary system. Na nor. Sa adipatyam. 
sovereignty, sovereignty of the lower planetary systems. Na, nor. Yoga Siddhi. Eight kinds of mystic yogic power. Anima, Lagima, Mahima, etc. Apuna Bhavam. Liberation from rebirth in a material body. Va or Samanjasa. O oh, source of all opportunities. Tva you. Virahaya. Virahaya. Being separated from. Kangshe. I desire. Translation. Purport by His Divine Grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Oh, my Lord. Source of all opportunities. I do not desire to enjoy in Jubaloka the heavenly planets or the planet where Lord Brahma resides, nor do I want to be the supreme ruler of all the earthly planets or the lower planetary systems. I do not desire to be the master of the powers of mystic yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to give up your lotus feet. Purport. A pure devotee never desires to gain material opportunities by rendering transcendental loving service to the Lord. A pure devotee desires only to engage in loving service to the Lord in the constant association of the Lord and his eternal associates, as stated in the previous verse. Das anu daso bhavitasmi. As confirmed by Nartam Das Thakur. Tandera charana sevi bhakti sanavas, janame janame hoy e abhilash. To serve the Lord and the servants of his servants in the association of devotees is the only objective of a pure unalloyed devotee. Amigenati bhadanda syaka ranjana shalakya chakshila militamina. Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karidava Chalam Pangam Langai Tegirim Yukripa Tamaham Bande Shri Gurun Dede Tarakam Vancha Kavadri Vishya Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishtave Bhyo Namonamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasudhi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Translation again. O oh my Lord, source of all opportunities, I do not desire to enjoy in Druvaloka, the heavenly planets, or the planet where Lord Brahma resides, nor do I want to be the supreme ruler of all the earthly planets or the lower planetary systems. I do not desire to be the master of the powers of mystic yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to give up your lotus feet. Brigu Pati Prabhu, he visited here. He's visited here a number of times over the years. And uh, every morning, practically, I don't know, anyways, a lot of the mornings he takes a uh, early morning walk. And he, uh, he walks very fast. <laughs> um, and Prabhupada also walked very fast. And... Uh, and it was I accompanied him one, uh, a number of times, but one time he, he wanted to go up to this Mount Soledad here with a big cross. If you just go up Faneuil and you keep on going, a few streets down Faneuil, you keep on going up, eventually you'll hit Mount Soledad. So he wanted to go up there, and yeah, it's a bit, it's inclined, it's a hill, so you're kind of, <laughs> and he's walking fast. So I was trying to keep up with them, and I was, you know, behind them. I was kind of keeping up to some degree. But I was, I was just recalling that, and I was recalling how I heard one time Srila Prabhupada was walking around a lake in, in, in Calcutta, and Prabhupada was doing his normal walk, which was really fast. <laughs> so there was a bunch of devotees following him. And then gradually... They started dropping off. One, two, three. 
practically everybody was dropping off. And then at the very end, um, there was just a couple of devotees. So it started out with a big group, and then there was just a couple of devotees. And then Prabhupada made a comment, and he said to the couple of devotees there, he said, Oh, they give up so easily. <laughs> so here, in this particular verse, or throughout the Bhagavatam, there's a high standard of, um, of, of pure devotion or principles to, to follow. I mean, even the basic principles that devotees follow, that's a high standard practically unimaginable or very difficult to conceive of for a lot of people in Kali Yuga because these principles, specifically the, right, this is what people live for, this is what people enjoy, right? Without it, they, they might as well, they might as well, uh, you know, they, they feel like they're in hell or something without that, like they're being punished. You think you could close that? Please. So even though it's a high standard, uh, this standard of, of, of pure devotion, this, this idea of just not wanting anything. Like here, he's praying that source, I do not desire to enjoy in Juva Loka, or the heavenly planets, to the planet where Lord Brahma resides. So he doesn't want any... So this is like what to speak of earthly enjoyment. He doesn't want heavenly enjoyment. And he doesn't want to be the ruler of all earthly planets or the lower planetary system. What's, what to speak of being the ruler of some other small, whatever, country or city or something. So he's... He doesn't want to be the ruler of any small or big thing. Um, and he doesn't want any mystic yoga, and he doesn't want liberation. So he doesn't want any of these things. He just wants to serve Krishna. So you could say, oh, it's a very high standard. But so, and sometimes people become discouraged on that basis, that it's such a high standard, how am I ever going to achieve that? I have a hard time giving up my small attachments, what to speak of other ones. <laughs> um, and generally people have a hard time giving, giving up their attachment to their family. It's a big attachment. <clears throat> or some other type of, nowadays, right, people are kind of ditching their family, so some you could say mundane relationships. Give up their dog. Yeah, give up their dog. Give up their dog, give up their pets, give up their girlfriend, or give up their, even if it's not girlfriend or boyfriend, their attachment to women and men. They have a, they have a hard time giving up these material attachments. Um, but still, this idea of family ties, is, it's still there. It hasn't disappeared yet. Um, but it's also something that people struggle to, to give up. What to, speak of, um, what to speak of achieving such a high standard of pure devotional service that you don't want anything else. <clears throat> so re recently... Uh, here in San Diego, they, some of my family, they, they, they put on a surprise party for my father's mother, my grandmother. She turned 80 years old. Still, you know, kind of strong, healthy at this point. But um, so it was interesting, though, because I was, whatever they were experiencing, I had my experience, and I was seeing, I was looking at the party, they they met here in vacation aisles. I went over there and but um you know, she had her grandchildren there and her great grandchildren there and her great great grandchildren there, a couple of them. Um and I was 
and we were there, and you know, taking pictures, snap, snap. So it was an interesting experience because I was involved in a few of the pictures because I was a grandchild or whatever, this and that. However, there was some connection there. So, and we were like connected, you know, means standing close to each other, whatever, like this. And there was some feeling of connection there, right? And then it was interesting. After the picture was taken, then everybody kind of dispersed, you know, into their different directions. Some people went to go ride bikes. Some people went to go get something to drink. Some people, you know, they just kind of dispersed like that. And I was thinking of the, the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, or I was thinking about the this idea that, okay, the twigs, they come together and they meet, right? in the ocean or in, the, in a river, right? They meet for some time, and then they... <laughs> but it was an interesting experience, because it was like, I, I almost like felt it. It was like, what to spur. Um, but, but, that, but that type of attachment that people have, it, it's, a, it's an attachment in the world. And um, devotees also have to deal with that means devotees also have families, right, or biological families, and what to speak of devotees who are married with children and everything. It's something that they have to deal with. means it's a, it's a, it's, it, it can be an attachment that can be mixed with, with certain motives, or it could just be unhealthy. Um, just like there's one case of a devotee it's interesting, actually. He he was re- driving his car, like a car, driving his car, and then it stopped right at a railroad uh, track, track, and a train was coming. And it wasn't stopping. <laughs> and it was coming fast. So he started chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, right? Naturally, right, devotees will chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna. Um, and then, you know, the, 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 tra- the train hit the car, right? Now, he didn't die, because later he told the story, but later he, he, he explained that he was chanting Hare Krishna, but just as the train hit, he thought, what about my wife? He thought about his wife, you know, and the train hit. So he, he remembered that. You know, that was his thought, his last thought before the train hit. So... You could say he was doing well, but then that thought, which, so, oh, well, she's a devotee, or this and that, or whatever, but that thought really shouldn't be there. Um, what about this? What about the shot? The thought shouldn't be there. It should just be Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Um, so, so then the question is okay, well, how do we. How do we uh, break? How, how do we you could say break our attachments? And of course, we all know. We all know, right? <laughs> what is that verse from the Bhagavad Gita? Rasovarjam rasopyasya vishya vinivartante nira hasya deena rasovarjam rasopyasya param dushtva navartite. So we have to experience that higher taste. We have to experience that higher taste. The, the higher taste that comes from um, sincerely engaging ourselves in, 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 in Krishna's service, in the service of the spiritual master, in the service of the, of the devotees. And as my spiritual master, he, he repeats often this particular... I'm not... I'm, I'm forgetting right now where he... If he I think probably heard it from Prabhupada because he quotes Prabhupada a lot. But um, just try to hear yourself chanting sincerely. <laughs> just try to hear yourself chanting sincerely. So when we're, when we're chanting Hare Krishna, when we're calling out to Krishna, the idea, okay, we try to hear ourselves chanting sincerely. So there has to be a sincere call because if we really want help, then Krishna will help us. But the call has to be sincere, or else Krishna's like, all right, well, 
how much help do you really want or what do you really want? Um, so if we want to get free of, 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 our, of our attachments or we want to clear out some things in our heart, whatever it may be, whatever, whatever's on the list, if we want to clear out that stuff, then, um, then we just have to call out sincerely. We have to engage, and aside from calling it sincerely, we have to engage in the service of, of Krishna. Kirtan takes the form of uh, takes many forms. Like Prabhupada was speaking with Srup Damodar Goswami, Goswami, and they're talking science, right? Not just science, but how to defeat the materialistic atheistic scientist, and they're really right. Prabhupada would really get into it, especially with Bhakti Srup Damodar Goswami, right? So they were speaking one time, and then a devotee came and said. Oh, the kirtan's happening. You, you, you want to come down for kirtan? It means they're upstairs. You want to come down to the temple room for kirtan. And then the devotee walked downstairs, and then Prabhupada said, Oh, he doesn't know what kirtan is. It means Srila Prabhupada and Bhakti Srupa Damodar Goswami, they were having kirtan. <laughs> it's a different type of kirtan, but they're having kirtan. So, um, so if we if we if we engage in the different aspects of devotional service, our heart will become cleansed, and we will not want anything else. Um, the list materialists—they have a big list, right? It's a big, ugly list of things they want to do, places they want to go, things they want to do, and it's all just completely godless or semi-godless or <clears throat> God's there but in the background, pious sense gratification, but they have a big list. So, but if we engage, then that list will, 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 um, won't be there anymore. But still, a devotee laments. Like one time, Prabhupada was in, I think it was in, yeah, it was in Ju Juhu, and then Prabhupada said, somewhat out of, seemingly out of context, Prabhupada said, I have one lamentation. And then he paused, and the devotees were thinking, what is that lamentation Prabhupada's talking about? He said, I have one lamentation. And he said that, my lamentation is that people are not taken to Krishna consciousness. That's my one lamentation. So we want to come to the point where we have no more hankering, material hankerings, um, or material lamentations, right? Brahma Bhutta Prasanama, the Shojati, the But we do have spiritual hankerings and we do have. Lamentation. That lamentation is that people aren't <laughs> taken to Krishna consciousness. But that lamentation shouldn't be uh, a source of depression or a source of, of frustration or a source of misery, but it should be a source of inspiration. Okay, people aren't taken to Krishna consciousness. Oh, let me keep on trying. Right? Try, try, try. And it's interesting because even though we try and we try and we try, <laughs> And people who are spiritual masters have this, this may have this experience, if not in every case of a spiritual master have this experience, that certain experiences with disciples, that they try, they try, they give them everything they can, practically. And, um, and still there's some, yeah, like, anyways, I was, I was in a, I was in um, I was in a room in uh, Long Beach, and uh, Tukaram Prabhu was there, and my sp and His Holiness Giriraj Swami and Vaisheshka Prabhu. And uh, anyways, there was some conversation there, and they were talking somehow or other. The topic of of spiritual master came up, and they were discussing it. And one of the things that was brought up is that that disciples sometimes they go in different uh, 
phases. Like it may seem like the disciple more or less is just giving up, but then the disciple comes back. So in other words, a preacher has to deal with that. Like here, we're cultivating so many people at the Christian Lounge. Yes, they become vegetarian, they do this, they start chanting this and that, and and then then they kind of... <laughs> Yeah, then they kind of regress, and now, you know, I'm getting into this, I'm getting into that, right? But the business of the devotees is they just still keep on trying, because those people could come come back, um, or they could, you could say, get more serious. I remember we have our, he's in Tucson. He got initiated, actually. Uh, Atishta Giridari is Alex. So he is Dharmaraj's, or you know, our Dharmaraj, uh, Deva, little Deva, right? Virgendra Kumar's son. So he was Dharmaraj's high school buddy. And Alex would come and hang out here at the temple sometimes, and, and I would talk with him, and other devotees would speak with him, and we were trying to encourage him. But you know, Alex would you know, he'd come around, and he would take off for like you know, months and then come back and it's like a constant. So then I was joking with devotees, I was saying, Don't worry, I'm I'm haunting Buck to Alex, you know, he's in my mind, you know, I'm joking, you know, but um but I was wishing him well, you know, I was trying to really and when I would see him I would try to encourage him a lot. But is it but anyway, it's interesting after after years of this he moved to Tucson and then he started coming to the temple more and and yeah, he got initiated recently. So uh, you never know with people. You know, sometimes some people are like it's kind of like the fast track. Some people are <laughs> kind of a little slower. So so if we come to the platform where we don't want anything, where we're completely satisfied, still a devotee who's on that, who's on 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 the level of that. Still, they, they want to give Krishna consciousness to others. So we should feel that, that, um, that desire uh, increasing w within us. And lastly is that Narottam Das Thakur, Srila Prabhupada quotes this quite a lot actually in his purports of the Bhagavatam and the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I'm not sure how many times he quotes it, but be interesting to look that up. But Tandera Charna Sevi Bhakti Sanavas Janame Janme Ho E Abilas. To serve the Lord and the servants of his servants in the association of devotees is the only objective of, of a pure unalloyed devotee. So Prabhupada would say this all the time that this this is what we should want. We should want to serve Krishna and the servants of the servants of Krishna in the association of devotees. And Prabhupada would repeat this over and over and over again, that we should always keep the association of devotees. And, <clears throat> and the more the advanced devotees, the better. Rupa Goswami says that also, that we should seek out more advanced association. Just, just like in mundane realm, if people want to be a wonderful basketball player, right? Waste their time in a wonderful way. <laughs> then they hang out with expert back basketball. That's better than them, right? Who is better than them? And on and on and on. They, they, they want to associate with people who will challenge them, who will encourage them, who will bring them along the path in a quicker way. They, ne they don't hang out with people who have no interest. That's called, Rupa Goswami says, Jana Sangha, hanging out with worldly people or taking their association. So, so devotees, they need to extend themselves to, to, to get that association. Also, Srila Prabhupada's books, very important. Prabhupada's associations within his books and his lectures, we, we could hear the association of so many. You, have, you could associate with Lord Brahma, right? Tenth Canto, his prayers, Shiva. Associate with so many wonderful pure devotees in the Bhagavatam, Narada Muni. So.
so we could associate <clears throat> with more advanced devotees, and this will this will help us. And it's a very slow and difficult path if people just block themselves off to the association of, of devotees due to feeling bitter, due to feeling whatever it may be. Um, they have to get out and overcome that. Okay, so does anybody have any question or comment? Or anything? Just quick vignettes. The, um, you were saying about Prabhupada on a morning walk. I went on a morning walk with a number of devotees, so many devotees, in Juhu, and to that long, flat beach. Prabhupada sailed down the beach at a rapid pace, it's like a clipper ship in full sail. He just, you know, then he sailed back, you know, at regal way he held his head. He sat down on the Vyasa sauna. We were all young men. I, I was like 22 years old. I was in good shape in those days. Every, we were all winded. Tamal Krishna Maharaj, you know. And Prabhupada was like, what? Like, we, we were too tired to start Guru Puja. We needed to catch our, our wind to sing the Guru Puja. Prabhupada was sitting on the Vyasa and so, and we were, you know, so there's that. It's true, just like you said. Um, the, there's that, I think it was the Marquis of Jetland. He'd been the governor of Bengal, and he met Ban Maharaj and the Gaudiya Math and said, can you make me a Brahmin? And they said, yes, we can make you a Brahmin. Just give up, you know, and describe the four regular principles. And he said, impossible. These things are our life. So confirming what you said. As far as the train thing, just quickly, um, this man wasn't a devotee, he's my father's business partner, Mr. Jorgensen. And Mr. Jorgensen, was, they were coming home from, a, right up here in uh, Newport Beach, Balboa. They were coming back from a summer vacation, and you, the road crosses a railway track, and, and, they, and it was bumper to bumper. You know, everyone's coming home from summer vacation, Fourth of July weekend or whatever it was. So they came to where the train tracks were, and the um, gate, he, he wanted to get through, you know, and the gate came down on one side, gate came down on the other side. They were blocked in, the car. It was a station wagon with everybody, all the kids, the wife, and the train came, was barreling down just like this. And then he, he couldn't, do, what could they do? They couldn't move the car. And um, when it got right down to crunch time, literally, he got out and ran. And the train slammed on its brake just like the movies and stop just in time and uh, he'd abandoned his family abandoned his kids saved himself ran for the hills so he had to get back in the car you know he'd shown his true colors he'd abandoned <laughs> he had to get back in the car <laughs> his wife said it was she said it was a long tense drive the rest of the way home you know you can imagine Awkward he moment. showed his colors Awkward moment, right? Uh, I was an awkward, that's the word I was looking for, it was an awkward moment. Just one quick comment. This same prayer was offered by the Nagapatnis to Krishna when, when their, uh, their husband was almost killed. So it's in, it's, it appeared several times in the Bhagavatam. What was the context? They well, they, they were praying that, that don't please, don't, please don't kill our husband. You know, and they, the way they pray, they, they talk about the dust of the lotus feet. And because they appreciated that their husband, as, as, you know, as, as demonic as he was, was so fortunate because he got the dust of the lotus feet all over his head. But were they saying, we can't give it up, or we can give it up? Because this is talking about give it up. This... Well, they, they, no, what they said there is... Um, not exact, but it's similar, right? Those who, have, those who have attained the dust of your lotus feet never hanker for the kingship of heaven, the sovereignty there, and all the three things that are listed in this thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Two-part question. Why are devotees reluctant to speak on controversy or speak in controversial ways? Even... <laughs> Even if speaking in such a way would be spiritually enlightening to the listener, and I'm referring specifically to controversial things Prabhupada said, which devotees choose to filter out, 
blacklist or even worse. And it's not, of course, it's not just limited to Prabhupada's quotes, but things that are going on today, which devotees refuse to speak on yeah. for similar reasons. Second part is, as ISKCON has grown from a completely grassroots movement to a multinational religious organization with closer ties to government, government regulation, at what point does ISKCON become compromised? Or to frame it this way, at what point does the filtration of truth become a clear sign of infiltration? Can you repeat that second part again, the infiltration of truth? Yeah. <clears throat> as ISKCON becomes, as, as it has grown, as it's grown in closer ties to government regulations, it, it, if truth is filtered out, if there is filtration of truth, at what point does filtration of truth become a sign of infiltration? Okay. All right. So, yeah, there's a number of things in Prabhupada's books that are wouldn't be considered uh, popular to, yeah, modern people. I mean, people get upset, angry. Um, I mean, people have that experience. Like, I, 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 I remember I distributed a book down in, I have done that before, by the way. I distributed a book to uh, Magalila. I've done that before. I I distributed a book to this this girl in um, National City. Anyway, she came to the temple and she came a few times and then she didn't show up again. But one one of the things she told me she was upset and angry, but she was reading in Prabhupada's books specifically, which Prabhupada would mention quite often, more so than other things about people being you could say on a, on in, on an animalistic platform. So she didn't really like, why, you know, referring to people as animals, you know, that's kind of too. So that, I mean, that's one thing. There's other things, obviously, in Prabhupada's books and the purport and throughout his books that, yeah, wouldn't people get upset about. Now, when, when we go through Srila Prabhupada's books, specifically like in the Srimad Bhagavatam class, we are reading verse by verse, purport by purport, and when these things come up, as far as I've seen here in the San Diego Temple, it's not like we, you know, kind of skip over them and you know we discuss them. Um, yeah, so it's not that we're just avoiding it or something, and also much of some of the th how Sri the Prabhupada would speak privately means with his disciples. Of course, things were being recorded. But if you analyze Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita classes, you know, he gave many Bhagavad Gita classes and he gave many Srimad Bhagavatam classes. But you could say these Bhagavad Gita classes or these public preaching programs, Prabhupada would stress certain things like you're not your body and Krishna's the supreme personality of Godhead and you should surrender and different aspects. He wouldn't get into, um, you know, bring up stuff in the fifth canto or the hellish planets or something or, you know, start, I don't know. Now there are some cases probably to bring up stuff that, yeah, was controversial and, and also public, but... Um, <clears throat> but it's it, it it's it, I mean it's hard to just to kind of put a blanket. Actually, it's not good just to put a blanket statement over the whole of ISKCON. And, and yes, at certain pockets of ISKCON, people are doing different things, um, speaking different ways. But at least for speaking for a, a large percentage, or at least, yeah, speaking for many of the preachers, you know, and what they're preaching, it's, I don't think they're out and out avoiding, you know. Anyways, that's something, that's a big topic, but. Uh, second part, uh, yeah, we have to make sure that things don't become watered down, um, because, 
o- over time, that's a tendency of religion for things to become watered down. Um, and as Srila Prabhupada said, that the movement cannot be destroyed um, from external sources, like we saw that in early days of Russia, right? It cannot be destroyed. It's going to go on. But Prabhupada said internally there could be there could be some some eroding and some destruction, just like the Gaudi Math, you know, historically. From internal combustion, you could say. So yeah, we have to be careful. <clears throat> we have to be careful not to water it down because the tendency, because we're a, what do you call it, a volunteer movement. Um, you may get people who are very materially qualified. <clears throat> I mean, maybe you get people who are very materially qualified. And because they're materially qualified, they could kind of, you know, work their way, way up, you know, the ranks, if you want to say, of leadership. And it, it's a danger because they, it's good they're materially qualified, you could say, you know, and organize things, get things done. But they're, they also have to have a sense of a preaching spirit, right? But they also have to have a, a good philosophical understanding. They, al- they also have to stand by the truth, by Prabhupada's instruction. So, but if you get people and they're, they're wavering in those, it could be problematic and things could be watered down. I think Bajan Swami has some. Just like you said, Balaram, blanket statements. You know, the world is nuanced, and it's, there's many... Well, I'll just give you a simple example. The, there is the danger of watering down, Prabhupada gave the example of, uh, you know, you, you, to increase your number of followers, you know, you, you, you water things down. Prabhupada said, if I hadn't introduced the regular principles, I would have had millions of followers. So if you water it down, it, doesn't, it loses its potency, it loses its effect, no doubt about it. It's a legitimate concern. Um, there's a group of us on the GBC uh, and senior members of ISKCON before we leave this world. It's almost finished, actually. Uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur did the Das Mula, which is the ten essential... Uh, Roots of Krishna consciousness of Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta. So we've taken that, and it's going to—it's a very nice statement of the cornerstone principles of Gaudiya Vaishnava as presented by Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada's presentation, and uh, that's going to become developed into course material. It's going to have a small booklet with uh, Rabindra Sarupru, your Guru Maharaj, Giri Rajmaraj, some of our best writers on those. And that's going to be generational, going generation after generation, so that we're assured, as far as one can in this world, that Prabhupada's preaching and Prabhupada's presentation of Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta stays constant. There's a reference. And so there's that. At the same time, you know, Prabhupada, did you know that Prabhupada said, do not print everything I say? Did you know that? Did you know that Prabhupada instructed the BBT, do not print everything I say? Did you know that? I think he said that about letters. Oh. He, yeah, he said about letters. He said about a lot of things. It's <laughs> interesting. You know, any Krishna himself, you know, in austerity of speech, uh, you know, you, you, you speak in a particular way according to the audience. That's intelligent. Krishna himself, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, didn't talk Ras Leela, only to a f- very small number of people. So you speak according to the audience. That's intelligent. That's Krishna does that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu does that. You have to be intelligent. Well, not losing the message. Uh, I'll give you an example. If we talked, certain devotees popped off about um, uh, Muslims and offend, you know, and, and according to Shastra, and it caused real difficulties in, in, in where we have devotees, Saudi Arabia, 
Qatar, different places. The devotees printed from Chaitanya Charitamrita, from Chaitanya Charitamrita, of uh, uh, Balabacharya. You know Balabacharya, how he was being first appreciated by Mahaprabhu, but when he's, you know, when when he said, "I've written a better commentary," and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called him a prostitute, and we printed that, and you know, it went Sridhar, one who gives up the husband, is a prostitute. And he's the original, you know, because he had different purport of, uh, you know, everyone follows Sridhar Maharaj. And, you know, Sridhar Swami, that's the proper understanding of Bhagavatam. And if you give up the Swami, you give up the husband, then you're like a prostitute. That's in Chaitanya Charitamrita. We printed that in Back to Godhead magazine. And we got a huge reaction um, from the Balabacharya, uh, what is it? Um, where are we talking about? Natwar. Yeah. Srinathji. Um, got a lot of them in Mumbai. Sarmarji. Uh, what is it? What is it? Sumati Maharaji, who, you know, funded Prabhupada's coming to America, is a follower of Pusti Marg Balabacharya. Became deeply offended. Prabhupada personally apologized to and wrote, I can show you the letters, and wrote to BTG, be careful what you print. So it's not that, oh, I'm pure and I just spout, you know, even it's the reference. You look at the audience, you look at the proper, you know, how to do it in the right way. And that comes from Prabhupada directly. It comes from Krishna, it comes from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and it comes from Prabhupada's personal instructions to us. So don't write off, oh, Iskhan, you know, you're just trying, you want to become big and powerful and you're kissing up and, you know, watering everything down and, you know, infiltration. It's a concern. It's a legitimate concern. But the rapid, oh, I'm almost done. But who was it? Was it Jai Dwaitam or somebody who said, well, Iskhan this, Iskhan that? He said, can you introduce me to, who is this Mr. Iskhan? You know, Iskhan is a very diverse. Yeah. <clears throat> place and circumstance. All right. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Bengali speaking out there. Bangla.